Let's do it. Oh, man. So it's been a little while since I've done this. Uh, you know, I had some issues with the, uh, <laughs> the circuits here um, between the lights and the computers and everything. It was uh, short stuff out, but got that all fixed. Uh, we've got, uh, got just some bug bounty validations that I want to do tonight. You know, I'm uh, pretty tired from, from working everything today, but I still wanted to get on and, and give this a shot tonight. And might end up moving a lot of this stuff to the weekend where it just makes a little extra sense. But, uh, you know, if nothing else, I'll get some cycles, share this out. If anybody wants to watch, great. If not, no problem. Oh, man. In fact, you know what I can do? As long as I don't have anybody else on here right now. Maybe put a little, you can just do like acoustic music on here, right? Maybe it's just some classical piano or something. I don't know if they don't get too upset with me for that. Just something nice to, to listen to here while I'm doing it. Oh, hey, there are a couple people watching. What's up? <laughs> I wasn't sure if anybody uh, felt like hanging out tonight. Okay, that's kind of nice. Y'all in the chat, let me know if it gets to be too loud or anything. I've never tried to play any music on my phone. Usually I've got, uh, got some people hanging out with me, but I think it's been an especially hectic week, and most everybody, including me, is pretty tired. So, anyway, let's go ahead and get started. I've got a, a lot of good findings here. My automation scripts have been getting that uh, I want to go through. So, we've got I've seen this America.gov one before. Um, all right, so let's go through and see. Well, first of all, come over here to this testing. Um, I always like to look at mismatch SSL service, but that IP's, well, America.gov, they may actually own that IP. Uh, let me see. I gotta fix that front end there. Well, it's very clearly found. Uh, nothing else really there, though. So, I can potentially do some fuzzing on that. I don't know. I'm not too excited with it, though. What about these here? It says it has an API key. This is kind of nice with the music. I might do this a little more often. All right, this is a .gov. This has got to be, wouldn't be coming from the DOD, I don't think. I don't know if this is a second. Actually, I think this is that new Hacker One program that just came out. All right, so this is coming. I assume this is not doing it dynamically, pulling up a headless browser and then going to look for this. So it's probably just in the page source. Let's go to the page source here. What are they looking for? I'm, I'm these are almost always, uh, just like a client side thing. There you go. Yeah, these are just API keys for, for client side. So this is stuff that you can pull out of uh, the client side JavaScript anyway. So I don't really care about that too much. Let's see, maybe come back over to here. It's, it's got a beta API. On HTTP, a lot of times these are just going to be redirects. Well, redirects to an HTTPS, but it's still a beta. Um, you know, this is what they're claiming. Let's see if the stage comes up as well. No, so the stage is given a 503. How far are we getting? Are we seeing anything? We see 12 there. You don't go away. I need you. Yeah, so. We're getting to a server though. We're, we're getting past uh, if there's a load balancer or anything, which Cloudflare makes me think AWS. But uh, let's see what else is down here. And these devs as well. The dev one's going through too. So those are definitely some that we could uh, spray for some endpoints, see if we can find anything. Logs as a redirect over to the share, uh, which I haven't seen a lot of. So, let me see if there's anything really edit staging. Uh, 
I was trying to do something. Nope. Looks like there's nothing there. Uh, static is probably just a CDN, which I think we can confirm that. Click on this here. Yeah. And he's going straight to the S3 bucket. These are all part of the same. <laughs> Probably blocking everybody. Yeah. Okay, so we've got a cloud flare here that is uh going to a specific port that's blocked. Um, all right, let's do this. Let me come over here, let's grab burp. Let's just do a quick test here. Intercept this, grab it, send it to the repeater. Yep, so we're getting a forbidden. I'm get something on Slack right now. Sorry, I got a work thing here. This is kind of the, the fun of it. All right. Quality content here, really getting some good retention, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, I'm gonna end work first. So this page is blocking us. Um, so a pretty simple test that you can do here, if you uh, if you want to check to see um, if you can possibly bypass this, this is typically, especially with AWS, uh, you can do an X forwarded for right there, and then you can try some different IPs. So, so the most common would be with 127.001 uh, right there. But you know you can try you can. Anything that you can think that might be an internal uh, IP, like a 10 something, uh, might work too. But ideally, there's uh, the, the ALB and AWS, the application load balancer, is going to be. Uh, let me turn this down a little bit. It's going to be receiving uh, those requests and uh, hopefully it's configured so that the value of the X forwarded for, or another one be the X forwarded by, right there. Um, there's a few different headers that can do that. Uh, we're hoping that somebody on the, the DevOps team has configured this so that it will take the value of this header and it will uh, either replace the value of the remote socket or what typically happens is you see it, uh, the, the IPs in the remote socket, they're actually added to a, a list or an array. Um, so it'll just append it to the last one. And then you run into some interesting scenarios where, um, or to the end of the array, then you run into some interesting scenarios where uh, maybe one piece of the code is designed in the application or somewhere is designed to uh, to you know grab that out of the beginning of the uh, the first index whereas other ones may be designed to grab to the final index and where so you have different IPs being read in different places um, but this can be a way to potentially bypass it I'm not going to try it here on stream um, well, I'll tell you what actually what I can do I've been thinking about kind of how to handle this because I don't want to disclose anything but I think this will work let's just move off here and I'll send it, and then if it doesn't work, at least I'll know. Uh, oh, okay. So it's not working, but it's also not... We're getting a little bit of a different response. Okay, so that's good. All right, so this is supposed to be a recon thing. Um, so I think... Uh, let's go back to the main screen here. So here's the thing. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't, it's not vulnerable from what I can see from the, the, you know, straight, like the easiest possible payload that you can put in, but this is probably a, a decent target here um, to try and bypass this. I would look up like AWS, you know, WAF bypass um, or Cloudflare, you know, WAF bypass. So in fact, let's, let's walk through a couple of those too for anybody, because I got a couple more viewers on here, see if anybody wants to actually see it. Um, so you can go to, uh, actually what I just do is GitHub, uh, Bypass. There's 
a really, uh, really well-known one. It also helps if you don't have Interceptor on in Burp, like I do. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, here we go. That's a really, really great uh, collection of resources for bypassing laughs. So what I would do here, let's say, um, you know, I was looking at this target. And again, I mean, it does. Let's make sure I've got the right one. Where's the one with the... Where'd it go? Oh, it was over here. Let me get rid of these other ones so I just don't have so many tabs open. This is the one that's, that's interesting so that the viewers can see if you want to target it. Um, so yeah, so if I wanted to bypass the laugh and come in, you know, we can see obviously very easy to tell what kind of laugh this is, the cloud flare uh, laugh. You'll see it in the headers as well. Um, I talked about the X forward and 4X forward to buy for that, but there's other, there's other you know, bypasses and things too. So, but what they're doing, what, what the, the team is doing is they've put uh, a barrier in front of that. They, they basically got to check at that application load balancer or, you know, it goes over. So it hits the application load balancer and then it gets sent over to the web application firewall to process. It checks all these values and says, okay, is this good to continue on to the application? Um, what's happening here is they, they probably have some type of a VPN internally in the company. Um, and uh, so they are checking the remote socket of the IP that's connecting. Um, and this would be used for developers that are uh, developing like at home or developing locally. Most likely, even though this is the government, you know, who knows, they may have remote workers. Um, well, I don't know, probably not. But uh, and typically with most companies, you'll see, you'll see that. But that's what you're trying to bypass. Um, so it seems really complicated and locked down. But if you see it for what it is, there's really just a conditional statement there, right? It's just like if the remote socket IP address is equal to one of these in the list, and these are our approved IPs, then you can continue and allow that request to go into the application. Otherwise, give this 403 error, which is right here. So as complicated as it seems, there's a lot of ways for this to, to go wrong, and that's what we're looking to exploit. So I mentioned the header, um, but there can definitely be some other ones. Uh, so what you do if you find any web application firewall and you want to try to get around it, because I think if we can get around it, we might find something that's probably not very well protected, might have some development things that they don't want us to get to, et cetera. Um, you know, you can come in here. I forget this is, okay, so it's still all in, I think you're going to read me right here, which is great. Uh, so you don't even have to go through. It's all built out in the README, and it's all in this printed on this nice markdown. So I just control F and do Cloudflare or whatever it is, and it'll show you how to detect it. Again, we don't, you know, you can see a lot of ways that, that we can tell what this is happening. So uh, come down further. Whoops. Where was that? Come down further and you can see some of the vulnerabilities. So we got a lot of cross-site scripting bypass. By the way, you know, these may have been here for a while. Uh, these WAFs get updated all the time. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt and go try it. This doesn't mean that anything's vulnerable, but these are some good things to have in your toolkit. And I'm obviously thinking right now, too, uh, if I'm seeing uh, these Cloudflare WAFs, if this is a government site, most likely they're on AWS Gov, right? So that's that's how they're managing that. Um, yeah, that's, that's how they've got to be. Um, so yeah, if they're if if they're in AWS GovCloud and they've got this WAF here set up, most likely a lot of the uh, applications they have are going to be behind a, a similar uh, mechanism. So if we can't bypass this, you know, that's it may not make a difference if we can. Oh look, here's like some RCE bypasses people are claiming. So anyway, we'll keep an eye on this. Um, I would definitely take this. Uh, I tell you, let's do book.hack tricks to. See if they have any information on what uh, WAF bypasses. Uh, if you don't have this bookmarked, I'd, I'd bookmark it immediately. Uh, oh, oh, hey Ralph, what's up, man? How you doing? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, man. Yeah, if you want to share it out with anything, please, man. Yeah, I'm uh, just trying to get some cycles in here. I'm, I'm lacking the energy that I normally have uh, after a long day of work, but uh, please, man, tell everybody to come. Uh, this weekend, I'm going to be doing some some long streams for sure, uh, probably a lot Friday, Saturday, Sunday, maybe even Monday night too, depending on how I'm feeling. i got a lot of open time this weekend. Luckily, don't normally have that, and I'm going to take advantage of it. So, uh, yeah, anybody that wants to come hang out would be phenomenal. Uh, okay, book.actrix. Let's see if they have anything. I don't want to do that there. Where's their search? Just doing Cloudflare first. 
We've got uncovering it, which we know we already know for sure. Uh, content secure. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We can use this. Okay, so if we can find anything with Angular, we can also possibly uh, bypass the content security policy. Uh, so that's another option. Um, all right, so we got a few things here. Okay, so I like this. I like what I'm seeing. I like. Uh, I didn't, you know, it's not vulnerable. I don't see where it's vulnerable, but it, it responded to uh, my request in a way that made me think that it may not be locked down in the way that they want it to be, I think is the way that I'll say that. Um, not vulnerable, not revealing anything. Uh, it's not, it didn't work, but uh, it had a different message that I liked. Okay. Let's try it. Are we seeing the same thing on all of these? Yeah, so it looks like they do 8443. Whoops, 8443 is their uh, alternative port. And then what about the 88? 8080s just aren't, or that one's just not hitting. What about this one here? Static content, nothing. So why is that? And why is my scanner picking this up is live and it must have given some type of a different response. I think that might be another one that you might be able to get you got some IP restrictions on. I might try the same thing there, but uh, okay. Let's move on from this one because uh, I don't see much here and also I don't particularly enjoy uh, doing a lot of the, the government ones anymore. I spent a lot of time on the DOD program when I was doing bug bounty hunting full time. And I was just like, I'm, I'm tired of working with Windows. I like, that's why I like, you know, I like working with more modern frameworks. I like client side prototype pollution, stuff like that. Um, so, all right, what do we got here? So I was like, check the CVEs first. Okay. Um, I love expired SSL certs. I love expired, actually I, I love uh, self-signed SSL certs. That's my number one. Number two is expired. Number three is mismatched. This is something that I love to do when I'm looking for targets is anything that has uh, SSL certs, that means it's something they're probably not paying too much attention. Now this right here, I don't know if it's a false positive because this is their main page unless, oh, is it? <laughs> I gotta fix my front end. Somebody please submit a PR. If anybody's like a really good <laughs> React developer because I don't love uh, coding in React. Or I actually, out of all the front ends, it's my favorite. Uh, I still don't want to do it front end. Uh, yeah, I mean, the cert looks fine. From here, at least Firefox is not picking it up and go on, but I just, I don't know. This looks like it would make a little more sense. I swear I'm going to fix that for the stream, because this is, if I watch this again and do any videos, it's going to drive me crazy. Oh, it's picking up. Well, it's picking up my BERT, sir. Is that giving me a false negative? It is. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I got to remember that. Yeah. So if you're, if it's looking like the cert is correct, the problem is you're going through BERT. Uh, okay. So does that mean they're, oh my gosh, I'm going to do that every time. Does that mean their main page is a, no, that's fine. Okay. So this must be a false positive, but the other one is correct. There's no way this one's right, so. Maybe they have some type of redirect service or something that needs an updated SSL cert, I don't know. Yeah, these all look fine, these all look fine. We do have this one here, so this one could be a good target. Is this an exact copy? That would be weird. Or not weird, that could be. Oh, this went over to an international? Why did it add that there? Does it redirect to international subdomain if you don't do the dub dub dub? Because I don't think I saw that last time. Although people may be watching at home and saying, no, you idiot, it did, which that's probably what you're saying, because that's what it did right there. But I think I missed it. Okay, so this is the international.newbank.br. And this page, which has no fave icon, just says home, has an outdated cert, and the subdomain ESG journey. Ah, so there's a lot more stuff here. 
So it's not like a staging environment or anything like I was kind of hoping. Sorry, y'all. Second here. Yeah, so I was hoping this was a staging environment. What's up, bug? Why are you making all that weird noise? I was hoping this was a staging environment, but I'm not seeing that. So this looks like it's a marketing page. Um, probably not much here, but I'll tell you what. One thing I like to do when I'm looking at stuff like this, we got, I'm always looking for what I call pointers, which are, um, just anything that, that I've seen before that I know could eventually lead to a bug or something. It's, uh, you know, it's almost more of a gut feeling, but over time you start to pick out like, oh yeah, I've seen that. Like I've seen, you know, maybe like I saw a page with an expired cert and it didn't have a fave icon and they didn't take the time to do the title. And then when I went in there and dug in, I, I found that uh, they had this other misconfiguration and everything. So it's little things like that to where you just kind of see and pick up on the patterns. Um, that's, that's, what I'm thinking with this, you've got enough dots that are connecting here. So the next question is, is there anything here? Does it make sense to do this? With a lot of marketing pages, um, you know, they're either WordPress, which is you, you got to get RCE, but even then, like if you can get remote code execution, a lot of times what they do is they outsource it, you know? So, uh, oh, hey, oh, I get to see my new thing. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, oh, it's Matt too. What's up, Matt? Uh, yeah, I set up my thing so that my, my dog comes up there. <laughs> Uh, appreciate it, man. Um, yeah, I, I got, uh, I took a little recording of tank. It makes me very happy to see it there. Uh, anyway, yeah, so they'll set it up in like a, a completely separate thing. You know, so it doesn't like, uh, it'll be, even you get a remote code execution, it's like you're not even attacking their infrastructure. You're attacking the, um, the whoever they're outsourcing it to. And, and, you know, first of all, they honestly probably don't care. The company doesn't care. Uh, you know, you could end up attacking something outside of scope uh, as well, which is something I always think about. Uh, check the IPs, check the IPs, check the company's ASNs. Um, you know, you can always reach out to their security team and ask them like, hey, is this within scope? Uh, is it good? Um, I promise. I, I run a bug bounty program. I, I promise. I, you can reach out to me too. Um, all right, let's see. So we're going to see if there's anything in here. Here, this on. And it helps if you re-enable the proxy there. All right, let's send it through. Now all I'm doing is grabbing this into my site map and let's get, let's get this here. And I'm just gonna like, I'm gonna uh, see if I can see anything in these like real quick scans, passive analysis that looks interesting to me. So let's set this at the scope. Let's only look at this page for just a minute. I'm not doing any hunting yet. I'm still doing recon. I'm just kind of looking for something that is worth my time, you know? Bug bounties, if you're doing bug bounties through HackerOne, bug crowd, anything like that, it's an Easter egg hunt. It's not a penetration test, right? That's why so many people quit because they start doing this and they think it's a penetration test. So they think they don't have enough technical skills to come in and do it. And they think they think there's all these things that they can't do and they don't want to do it. It's, it's an Easter egg hunt. It's something you can do in your free time. It's kind of fun. You just learn one or two attacks. You know, you may not make a lot of extra money, but you learn stuff, you get better, and you do make a little bit after, over time. You start to get the hang of it. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for something that's, that's worth my, my time. Uh, and you know, initially, so Burp will do a, a basic crawl here, uh, and it's showing us some different things, um, some client-side JavaScript pages. One thing that, that marketing pages are really good for is client-side vulnerabilities. Um, and I've seen a lot of a lot of them are starting to use these more complex uh, client-side libraries that that um, you know maybe they have you know they don't keep them updated so you've got client-side things with prototype pollution I, I'm, I'm very bullish right now on client-side prototype pollution escalate to cross-site scripting combine that with the CSER for a session writing attack is a really great way to do it and you can find sometimes these marketing pages uh, they they open up the content security policy of their other applications for this marketing page um, it's not always, but sometimes they like to have them talk back and forth. And, you know, if they're not watching it, things can go completely awry. 
You know, you can, you can find something here that may seem ins insignificant, but it can allow you to bypass their content security policy. And maybe they have some scoping issues with their cookies where the cookies are, are playing back and forth. You know, I mean, look, these are on the exact same top level domain, I think. Oh, no, they're not. No. Okay. So we got a dot com. So we are looking into marketing. Um, if these were at the same top level domain, so the dot br, uh, then, you know, you could have cookies that are scoped to each other. There's a lot of things that could be happening here. So don't give up on marketing pages. Uh, just make sure you know who you're targeting and, and, you know, know what types of attacks to go to. All right. So home, I'm always looking for custom JavaScript. So like if you find something that you know has a vulnerability in it, a client side JavaScript page, go for it. But this is good. So we got a home page. We got the title is home. So now I'm thinking I would start going for uh, DOM-based cross-site scripting. You can just kind of glance this here and see, you know, what's going on. So is there a you know, document .query selector? Uh, you know, details. Um, ah, it's doing some stuff. So nothing really there. I don't know if this one looks kind. It's definitely not custom. Um, yeah, definitely not custom. So let's click around a little bit. Let's just see. Okay, well, there's there's some more in there. I'm looking for anywhere to interact with it. You know, a web, the difference between a website and a web application is a web application, there's data behind it, and it performs CRUD. It creates, reads, updates, or deletes that data. Um, a website just shows data. It just, that's all it does is presents the data to you. Um, and a lot of these marketing pages, they can be, you know, there's almost nothing to, to input. Um, I mentioned before, you know, you still have your, your sources and sinks for uh, DOM-based issues, for DOM-based XSS, for client-side prototype pollution, but you're not gonna find any or a lot of parameters to manipulate it. And even then, you're really located to window.search if they use it, window.hash. That's probably your best best bet, window.hash. Anyway. Um, give me something. Give me a form. Uh, it's just an expansion, a video. Links to other social media. I'm not seeing much here. There's not. I'll tell you what. Let's come in. Let's see what the what the debugger says. Are we loading in a lot of other scripts outside of the one here? We got AJAX calls coming out. Let's reload the page and see how complex this is. Hmm. Is it pulling in an MP4? Oh, those are all the, the I guess those videos that were embedded in there. I think it MP4 is a video. I don't do enough with video stuff. Who knows? There's just not enough here. Got a couple 404s on this one. So again, I mean, this looks like an outdated marketing page. They probably haven't been keeping up with it. You've got a completely separate top level domain. Uh, you've got, I don't know. The only custom JavaScript is just one function that runs. I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it here. Um, yeah, if anybody wants to go after it, go for it. But this is one that I would personally pass on. Is there anything that is really standing out here in, in Wapalizer? Uh, I, you know, maybe somebody knows a, a CVE for that one that I'm missing. I really don't know. But it's okay. Okay, we've got our mismatched here. That's a redirect. I do like to, you know, we can always come in here and at least do a quick check to see if this is configured properly. <laughs> well. Um, okay, so same thing that we talked about. They've got a redirect here. Um, we've got a, a cloud, you know, front um, thing here. So again, we know that we're still dealing with AWS. We know that um, we know that our, the attack we were looking at before could potentially work. So you know what I would do here, um, and I won't just because it's such an easy test, and we find out if it's vulnerable or not, and I don't want to disclose it, but. Um, what I would do here is load this up in a burp just like I did before uh, and test those bypass things. So it's really X forwarded for, X forwarded by. Um, there may be a couple others that I would do. Um, if you can find that this, uh, you can bypass this, I'm looking for internal routes. I'm hoping that this is some type of a mechanism to where, yeah, I can bounce off the edge and go out, 
but this is in their environment and it's routing internal. That's what, why they've got it as a 403. Um, it's kind of a shot in the dark, uh, who knows, but it'd be super great if we could, we could find that. Um, all right, I'm moving away from them as well. Let's see what we got over here. Um, outdated Apache, a few other things. These are almost always false positives as well, so I'll move past that one. So, actually, no, let's go to the, let's see what other things are in there. I don't feel like checking Jenkins, playing with that. What is this wrong? These are weird, ugly URLs. I don't like working with URLs that look like this. They make me sad. I don't know if that's actually going to load up with something. There's an uploads. See, I just don't like this. <laughs> it's like... All right, one more, see what happens. All right, there's something, there's something. And we're going to know off. Okay, I'm bored, I don't like this one. You, I gotta leave. All right, you got some mismatched, go away. Let me give these a shot. I don't love the Hostmaster. Um, you know, it's some people may see that and think that it's indicative of something, but this kind of tells me that it's open sourced, or I'm not open sourced, uh, outsourced. You know, simply burgers. Well, I want to be the administrator. Of simply burgers. Is this something? I don't like this. Is this something where like? Hold on. Do they, do, is this something where they provide a service to a, a, to all these different customers and then that customer is just given a subdomain? I don't want to be attacking some poor Simply Burgers admin pay, like just somebody that came in and got this service and didn't set that up correctly. I don't, I really don't want to do that. Let me, let's see if I can figure out what exactly this is. Yeah, about us. What do you do? It's an Equifax company. Yeah, I feel like you come in, you get this, you get a, you know, I don't know, Dag Bank. Maybe not. I mean, Simply Burgers is the only one. What, is, what happens if I go over here? It just gives us a 404. Yeah. I don't like it. Nothing about that one standing out to me. You know, by the way, we'll do a selfless plug real quick. Let's go to github.com. We'll do uh, This is my GitHub. If you want to get this little dashboard here, I mean, it's very much so a work in progress. I've been doing it for the past couple of years. I've just kind of built it organically. Um, as I needed just different tools for bug bounty hunting, it's like, oh, I need that. No, I need a front end. I need an API and, and this and that. It's kind of come from it. Um, clearly, I've done absolutely nothing to the, <laughs> the uh, styling and the front end is all janky and stuff. But uh, anyway, if you want it, it's, it's totally free. Um, I, I try to make it as easy as possible. You can let me know if you have any questions, but it's right here and then the toolkit goes with it. Um, and both of them have install scripts and stuff. Um, this one actually doesn't have an install script, but it's, you know, it's meant to run on Windows. You just install those. The way I do it is I've got my Windows machine here and then all of the uh, actual scripts will run on Kali over here. And then I just do a bridge connection between the two and it works pretty well. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've had people in other streams before the mission like, hey, I like that little dashboard. What, how can I do that? Um, everything I have, everything, all the automation scripts, all my recon scripts, all the vulnerability checkers that are coming in and doing this, uh, everything on here. So there's not, no other like repos or nothing. I just put it right out there and you know, if anybody wants to use it, go for it. So, uh, yep. Yeah. You know, if anybody wants it anyway, selfless plug over selfless, definitely not selfless, shameless. It's the word I was looking for, but it's close to the end of the day and I can't think. And I'm mumbling to myself in a dark room in front of a camera. This is really weird. If you think about it, really weird. Come on. I told you I 
love self-signed certs, and I especially love self-signed certs that have a dev on it. I think these are going to be a shot in the dark, but if we can get any one of these to work, we're going to have a great target for some bug bounties. Okay. And I'm sure some of you may be asking, hey Harrison, you've automated all this different stuff and you haven't automated checking these. And the reason for that is I... Uh, enjoy this for some reason. There's a, uh, I don't know, there's something about just kind of relaxing at the end of the day and <laughs> hey, maybe it's just looking for mistakes other people make, obviously, or honestly. <laughs> if, if I really think about it, it's just like, yeah, um, <laughs> getting over imposter syndrome or something. I'm realizing as I get further and further into this that uh, <laughs> I might be getting a little too comfortable in front of the camera. Come on. Can you give me one? I'd be so happy. And it's an API too. I love doing API testing. Where's Tanky? Come here, bud. I need you for good luck. Come here. We got a couple more to try. Let's try it with you and Mom. Come here, bye-bye. Who's your big old fuzzy puppy? Come on. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. Oh no, you're so fat. Oh, you're so fat. Okay, you're gonna be my good luck charm here, okay? You my good luck charm? You don't care? You were happy or sleeping? I don't know. It's kind of harder with one hand. <laughs> Last one, love. I should think we have one. What you looking at? What you looking at? What is it? I don't think we're gonna get lucky. Come on, APIB. Come on, Tank. Tanky. You gonna get it, boy? Let's see it right here. Let's see it right here. Let's go. Let's go. See it right here. Doesn't look like it's gonna be it. Okay, good try, bud. I appreciate it. Love you to death, but you're heavy. Cut down the food a little bit more, maybe I'll be able to hold you longer. And uh, I know, I know. Swing and a miss on that. Swing and a miss on that. But it's picking it up. So the certs are there. Hey, I might try an in-map scan on the IPs. Honestly. Hmm. I don't want to do that now, but I can do it. If anybody wants the, the IPs or anything, if you want to run an in-map scan on it, let me know. Can you take a look at some of these two? I mean, who knows? It seems like all these are even working. I don't know what the heck this is supposed to be. Oh, okay. Well, this is up. And this one has a mismatched SSL cert. It's not getting any extracted results, so what? Let's get rid of burp here. Reload it again. Hmm. So the cert is just for this subdomain. We've obviously got a subdomain on the subdomain, etc. Um it's using HSTS. Uh, by the way, super simple way to bypass HSTS. Um, so right now, what HS, if anybody's not familiar with HSTS, what it is, um, it's a, a supposedly more secure uh, implementation or secure uh, thing you put on top of uh, HTTPS. Um, that basically, if you have just HTTPS, if you don't have HSTS uh, on your app, then when you come here, it's got the option to continue. So the customer can go and continue, or the client, whoever. Um, here with HSTS, the, the goal is that I can't click go ahead. Um, so I can't, you know, it, typically that's what somebody would see if they thought they were going to say log into their bank, but instead it was like, you know, my bank 
you know, dot evil.com, right? So it's, it's something that I control and then I, I send it over to you and like a, a, some type of message you clicked on in the link. It's a phishing attack. You go there and you, you just click through and bypass it. Um, you know, if you know that you can't do that, then, then obviously hopefully, hopefully there'll be some red flags there. But um, all you have to do is route it through a proxy and have a valid search for proxy and come through here and you can obviously get through to it. Um, now a question, is there anything? Oh, and this is just a, okay, it's just a reverse proxy anyway, so. Yeah. Great big, who cares here? Yeah. Anything? Well, that certainly looks. <laughs> okay, yeah, this is something I would definitely uh, test because why? Right? <laughs> like, what, what happened to where, you know, this, I, I'll tell you what I'm thinking happened. I'm always doing this. When I'm always looking around, I'm always imagining what, what did the individual do? What, you know, what was going on that day? What, what did the JIRA ticket look like or however they do their, their, their work? Um, this to me says somebody had to get uh, a, a version of that just to test something. A developer, somebody had to get something set up. And so they brought it up, and at some point when they were getting this set up, whatever way they were doing it, I'm imagining a GUI because it's you know it's a GUI, and there's just these different input boxes. At some point, I think they just like kind of you know went in here and smashed like that, and said, "Okay, that's fine. Whatever. You know what I mean? They're going real, real fast. I got to go I'm behind on the deadline, and I got to get this in there, and, and uh, uh, you know, I just need to check this one thing and it's not working in some place. So I'll just throw it up there and nobody will know. And then they completely forgot to take it down. And it had this backdoor mechanism they had put in as part of their testing. And that allows me to, you know, get some type of remote code execution. And this is in their environment. That's all of that is, is kind of coming together in my mind is, is something to make this seem like a, a good target. Uh, so this looks like a great target to me. I love this. I'm 100% going to uh, poke at this. Uh, although I do, I like this. Um, <laughs> I don't know if they're just trying to make fun of me here. So it's the same reverse proxy. Let's go back home do. Weird. Weird. I'm not going to do any crazy testing, but. So yeah, 100%, that's on my list. I'm glad I was about to get rid of these just from what was coming back on the service. This one, I have a bunch of stuff. There's those A stages that weren't coming back. See, again, I'm looking at the same thing here. So look at this wild list of subdomains. And it has something that looks like a uh, first initial and a last name, or maybe this is like an A, B, C to go down, then you have the first initial is the B and the last name is a uh, Prasad there. Um, I, so again, do, do the developers have their own uh, instances? They all get their own instance? And if so, did this individual just misconfigure theirs? Did they open it up when they shouldn't have? Because uh, it's saying that it's, it's you know, given a valid response here. Uh, or otherwise, again, did they just, they were going through and setting something up real quick and they got to the first one and said A and they entered their name? Uh, that's less likely, but an autofill is, is probably more likely, which could be done from a password manager. But anyway, it's all no point if it doesn't load up in the first place. Okay, this is a ton of stuff. This is super messy. I don't particularly like working, uh, working through these, but... This one I would fuss. This one I would for sure start spraying around a little bit. I'd hit it with some more uh, targeted attacks. Just see if there's anything hidden in there. See, to see if there's some API endpoints. Uh, yeah. yeah. It looks really interesting. Uh, all right, move on to my retirement manager here. Lots of SSL certs. We get a beta. Sure, and leave all those up. So, all right. So this beta. Turn off burp. Check the cert. I was claiming the cert is mismatched, but 
Why does it still say import swigger? Is this just pulling the cache? Let's do, let's do a private window and do it in here, I guess. I mean, that was there though. It's given a 404, but that that's a 404 just on this root endpoint. So don't, if you see something like this, that means everything's valid up until this point. It's just that route that's not there. So this is where you start looking for endpoints. You know, I, I would, in fact, let's, let's do that real quick, just so I can walk through that process and the people that are on here can see it. Um, yeah, just come in, intercept this. Run it through the proxy. So if I get a 404 here, and I want to know if this is a decent target, um, let's get this as well so I can add it to the scope. I'll get it added into burp, and we'll target it just like we targeted the last one. That's old, right? Did I just add that to the scope? All right, right. What are you doing, Bert? Let's try this again. Tom, if he gets it, great. Otherwise, move on. Back to more, you gotta start. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, like I said, uh, we'll wait and see if it if it picks that up. It's not adding it. Yes, Burke's having a little bit of trouble there, so that's okay. But uh, yeah, just just scan for endpoints. You know, fuzz for endpoints, um, just like you would with any API. Um, Seclis, uh, I like the raft. Wordless. Um, Try to figure out, you know, go look at the technology that's there. If, if there's anything that you can see, if you've got a little bit of information. Um, oh, this is in Perva. All right, so it's going through an Imperva WAF. Then we got an Apache server. I don't think we're getting this, the uh, version of the server there, but yeah, so you're getting all the way there. I mean, very easily. Apache, um, a lot of times, I, you know, you see PHP running on Apache. Uh, we can hope that there's something hidden in there where, you know, if, if it's like a, the, a really basic, like the, the applications, you know, 20 years ago where there's no MVC or nothing like that and it's just an Apache server and it's got PHP uh, pages and it's just serving them statically and, and you know, being processed within the, the thing. Back when the server side and the client side code was all in the same thing. Um, I lost my train. <laughs> Anyway, if you find that there, obviously there's a lot more options to attack. So that's what I would be hoping. I might do a PHP word list on here. It's so like, you know, in fact, one thing that might be really good just as a quick check is index.php. Oh, that would have been really cool if you found something. Um, but yeah, you check index.php, all that, all that stuff. Um, see if you can find anything there. These mismatched certs are not as good. Um, I was looking at this. I do think I'm going to spend some time. Is this going to work? So we get a 404. 404 on the beta, same thing. Dev, we're getting 404s on a lot of these. So do they have some type of uh, bad process within their DevOps where they don't take out, they rip out all the application code, but they don't take away the rest of it. They don't take away the infrastructure. In which case, uh, what you know, other mistakes are they making? Or what it's not a mistake, I should say, but what are their where are they cutting corners? You know, because that's usually where you're targeting is. Uh, is complacency that'll kill security or, or you know just people people taking shortcuts um, people being stressed you know that's that's what ends up killing securities 
it's never the big crazy hacks that everybody's gonna come in and get some wild RCE. And you know, you don't need to do that. You just, you know, you, you attack the people. Anyway, I think, I think this is a good one. I think this is a good one. Um, just because I like, it looks like an app, it's got a login, um, although it doesn't look like there's any way to register. Oh, maybe there is too. Uh, it's probably not going to let you get through the whole one, but I mean, you can give it a shot. Maybe you can. If I can get in here, I'm definitely going to spend some time in this one. I love when I can get in and get an account. And this looks like something that isn't touched too much, you know. We're not looking at like a lot of times when bug bounty programs have a, uh, a login page, you can actually log in and you can test it out. It's usually like their main thing. It's like come test our app, register for this app. It's rarer to find something that's buried within the scope. This is going to be in the AIG program, which is a huge program. Um, and this is obviously not one of their main ones. I'm, hopefully it would be like kind of halfway down and maybe not a lot of people touched it. And the people that do touch it and they, the, peop, the, the researchers that do attack it uh, probably didn't go too deep. Um, and you can you can end up finding some some uh, treasure troves down there if you can get to you can get to where you can log in and, and where they're actively developing it and you can monitor it for a little while and you can see as they're adding new pages oh we've got some work being done on this whole new you click this tab and they're adding in this new functionality you watch them develop for a little bit and you can just just kind of build up a bunch of things and get them all at once it's a great way to, to make a lot of money uh, which if you're doing this for a living. Uh, is something you gotta do. Okay, so I'm gonna keep that up there. I'm not gonna delete it, but I'm also not too bullish on anything in general. Uh, it's just that, so. Uh, login is still running. Um, the last one that's up here. So I've got my slow burn module burning now, so or running now, so it's just scanning each one of these. If it doesn't find any CVEs or anything that looks interesting, it'll just throw it out and go on to the next one. And, these are all public programs that, that have been, uh, or, or they are top level domains from public programs on HackerOne where all subdomains are in the scope. So you have star dot top level domain, and that's all within the scope. Uh, anyway, I remember looking at this. Yeah, there was just one. I checked this right before I got on the stream. Let's copy this. Let me keep that one, but I'll go away from you. I'm still going to do some fuzzing on those. If I would do. Oh, weird. Okay, so this one right here. Yeah, and again, this looks like something that somebody got set up. So, so, B. Prescott wanted to do a GitLab test. This is exactly what I was talking about. I wanted to do a GitLab test. And uh, put on here the, this crazy subdomain. And, and B. Prescott thought nobody was ever going to find it. He didn't know Harrison was going to spend five years building scanners and having $15,000 worth of computer around him. So this crazy guy right here, me can come and find this little thing here. But I did. Uh, so what happens when we click on it? Will we come over here to this user, or no, where do we go? We go to this one right here. So we get redirected to a login. Now that could be the B Prescott hard coded a redirect to this other login and that's all that it does. Or could be the B Prescott set up a single sign on implementation on this endpoint. So B Prescott, to make it super easy to log in, that individual set up a redirect to where, it's not even a redirect, it's part of the single sign-on functionality. So just like when you click sign in to like, you know, Google or something from another page, it'll redirect you over to that Google login, you log like you come in and you're logged in even though you didn't you didn't have an account, you just logged in through there. That's called OAuth, um, single sign-on. So can be a little bit different, but um, you know, be a sample implementation. But anyway, anyway, so did B Prescott set this up to where when B Prescott goes to their uh, page here, it sends them over to the login, it sends the session token back in, and it logs a valid session token in to see whatever Prescott's got going on. If so, if I could find a way to get access to this. You know, that would obviously be a big, it'd be a great vulnerability bug, you know, assuming that I can't just register for it. 
Um, but if I could register, well, even if I did that, so let's say that, let's take worst case scenario. I'm able to bypass this authentication. I'm already getting an awesome bounty. Well, I've got this that's just been sitting in wait. So the first thing that I'm going to do before I submit this bounty is I'm going to come back and I'm going to try exactly what I just said. I'm going to you know, make this request through this URL. I'm going to log in with the account that I don't have access to, come back and see if I can get into this new thing as well. Maybe you've got some SSO implementation. If you can find that, your, your authentication bypass just became two major vulnerabilities. You know, see, I always sit on little things like this and think about what could have happened. And I always have a, a you know, a big collection of, of targets like this to where I don't really know what's going on, but if I start to dig into the target, I start to get something to where I can get some chaining bugs. Chaining bugs, something I talk about like um, open redirects, right? Open redirects can be ways of getting beyond uh, content security policies and things like that. A lot of times open redirects are out of scope, but if you have this, uh, if you can get one, you can escalate other bugs. Um, I'm always keeping track of things like that and coming back to the programs and seeing if I can, I can use them later. But anyway, uh, I think that's going to be about it. There's not much else on here. That's really all of what we're picking up. Um, you know, I don't know if I'm right or not. I'm just making some assumptions. I'm going to go in and do some more testing. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, definitely going to do some testing on this. Again, I mentioned uh, I well, just test for IDORs. Uh, if you can log in, um, indirect object references be phenomenal option here. You probably have some big complex objects on, on the back end. Um, right here, fuzz, right here, uh, IP spoofing, uh, WAF bypass, things like that. Uh, yeah. Anyway, Tank, where you at? Come here, Bubba. So, I think uh, about an hour is what I've got the energy for tonight. So that's what I'm going to do. Thank you very much. If y'all came, hung out with me for a little bit. Um, I'm going to try to do these as much as possible. Uh, yeah, you can catch me on LinkedIn, uh, GitHub. If you want to get, like I said, any of the tools that I have, if you have any questions, you can ask them on LinkedIn. I do have a Twitter. i got to start using it. It's brand new. I never had a Twitter before, but I do now because I think you, you need one to kind of talk with this stuff. And there's a great community of bug bounty researchers on there. Um, but yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. Appreciate y'all coming. Oh. oh, what's up, Rob? I didn't know you were on here, too. Thanks, Matt. I appreciate you hanging out. Hey, Rob, uh, uh, good to see you, man. Let's, uh, let's chat sometime. All right. Have a good night, y'all. I'm going to sleep. <laughs>